Good evening, church. For those here and those watching online, let's stand up and sing our call to worship. Oh, how I love Jesus. good to see everyone tonight for our Bible study time, our business meeting time, our prayer meeting time. So we have uh, quite a bit to do tonight. And uh, if you look at uh, the agenda, uh, or if you, whenever we look at the agenda in just a moment, you know, we have our business meeting time. There are several recommendations tonight. So we'll have a few things to do officially, not just to bring reports. So uh, we'll jump into our Bible study and uh, we're moving, we're, we're in the uh, study through the scriptures. We're going from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, we are in the Gospels, and we have uh, uh, studied Jesus' life. We've studied his teachings. We've studied his miracles. We've studied uh, his healings. We've studied many different things about Jesus. Now we're moving into that most important part, if there is a most important part, uh, and that is the Passion Week, uh, the week leading up to including the crucifixion, the, the, the uh, denial, the tr uh, trials, the uh, uh, crucifixion, uh, the burial, and then the resurrection. So we'll be studying those for several weeks. In fact, as you look at the scriptures, uh, in the Gospels, a overwhelming uh, portion of the scriptures that are given are given to the Passion. Uh, for this, just this one week period of time, during the life of Jesus, during the ministry of Jesus, for instance, Matthew's gospel, eight of the 28 chapters, so roughly one-third, one-fourth to one-third, uh, given to just this one week. Uh, Mark 6 of 16, so again a third. Uh, Luke 6 of 24, that would be exactly a quarter. But John, 10 chapters of 21, almost half of John is centered on this one week of Jesus' life uh, as we think about the importance of the crucifixion, of the resurrection. I mean, this is why Jesus came. I mean, Jesus came to teach great truths. Amen. He came to heal. Hallelujah. But he came to die on the cross. That is the purpose in his coming. And that's what difference it makes to us. It's not just that you hear some good truths, live by them. No, it's here's the Savior, follow him. And so as we look at our passage tonight, we're going to see the beginning of this uh, uh, Passion Week, if you will, and as I said, we'll be here for several weeks on Wednesday night. So take your Bible and turn with me to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, and this is what we would call the triumphal entry. The triumphal entry when Jesus comes uh, into Jerusalem for that very last time, uh, entering into Jerusalem uh, on that uh, what we call Palm Sunday. I mean, we've got even a name of the day that... Uh, 
for this uh, entrance. And so let's stand together. We'll read chapter 19 of Luke as we uh, see that in verse number 20, um, beginning in verse number 35. 35 says this, then they brought him to Jesus, brought a colt, a donkey colt to, for him to ride. They threw their own clothes on the colt and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their coats on the road. Then as, they was now, as he was now drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works which they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in, the, in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you, if these, should not, if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this passage. Lord, I pray that you'll be with us as we look at this uh, account. Lord, as we look at this entrance. Lord, as we look at this beginning of the Passion Week. And Lord, how important it is for us, Lord, as believers in you, Lord, that you died on the cross for our sins. Lord, that you were buried and that you rose again. And Lord, as we see the events leading up to that, uh, momentous occasion on that Friday night through Sunday morning. Lord, I pray that you'll just give us wisdom as we study. Lord, not only tonight, but in the weeks to come. Lord, just bless our time. Lord, I pray we'll come with anticipation each Wednesday night. Lord, to learn from your word, to study again from your word. Lord, this most important of passages together. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> All right, as we see in this passage tonight, I just want us to, we're going to look at three different aspects of this and uh, a couple of other things are surrounding the triumphal entry. Uh, kind of the beginning. This is kind of the uh, entrance into Jerusalem. This is the entrance into for the Messiah coming in and uh, just kind of picturing uh, the festivity of it. I mean, just the excitement of it as Jesus enters Jerusalem being proclaimed by the people as the Messiah, as the one who comes in the name of of the Lord as the one who is coming triumphant to take his throne and to rule. Uh, that's what they have in their mind, okay? They have that thought in their mind. Jesus doesn't have that thought in his mind. He did not come to set up an earthly kingdom in his first advent. He came to die on the cross. Uh, he came to be buried. He came to rise again. Now, on the second advent, when he comes again into the same gate into Jerusalem, he will set up a kingdom. He will set up a throne, and he will rule and reign, and we'll be along with him uh, as, as he comes in. So uh, that will be a, a glorious time. Well, think about this coming in. There's several events surrounding this, this uh, time that are important. Uh, in uh, chapter 18, verse 31 of Luke, just kind of backing up a little bit, uh, we see Jesus predicting that he's going to Jerusalem, and they're going to uh, put him to death, but on the third day he'll rise again. This is the third time he has predicted. Uh, he has given them the assurance. He's given them the understanding of what's getting ready to happen. You know, the disciples, they were caught off guard just because they didn't understand. They weren't caught off guard because Jesus didn't tell them what was going to happen. Three different specific times in, the three, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it gives the uh, uh, prediction, if you will, of Jesus saying, here's what's going to happen whenever we get to Jerusalem. We're going to Jerusalem. Uh, we're going to be turned over to evil men. They're going to crucify me. They're going to kill me. Uh, everybody's going to be scattered. But on the third day, I'm going to rise again. That's why the angel's going to say to the women at the tomb, uh, he's risen. Remember what he said while he is on the way. Well, this is him on the way. Okay, and he's telling them we're getting ready to go. It's going to be a horrible time, but it's going to be a great victory in the end. Well, they go through uh, Jericho, and as they're coming into Jericho, there's blind Bartimaeus. And I think this is such a great passage because he's begging. In, in Luke, it doesn't name him, but in uh, Matthew and Mark, it, it uh, names him. Uh, and uh, he's begging, he's crying out whenever he hears Jesus is passing by. He says, uh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody's saying, be quiet, be quiet. But the more that he, 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 he's there, the louder he gets. Why? You know, he may have just realized, this is the last opportunity I'm going to have. There's no other opportunity. If I don't, if it's now or never, if he doesn't heal me this time, he's never passing this way again. 
And, you know, sometimes that's why whenever the Spirit's moving in our hearts, we need to respond in whatever he's telling us to do because he may never pass that way again. And that's exactly what happens with blind Bartimaeus. Uh, then he goes on into Jericho, and there's Zacchaeus up in the tree. Uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 1. Uh, he must spend some time because he goes to his house and dines with him. More than likely, he didn't leave from Jericho and go to Jerusalem during the middle of the night. Okay, more than likely, he stayed in, Jer in Jericho that night and then goes into, uh, on toward Jerusalem. He stops in Bethany in John's gospel, John chapter 12. It says six days before the Passover, he comes into Bethany, and he's there, and, he is, and that would be about the right time frame. Uh, as he is there, and uh, he's with Lazarus, he's with Mary and Martha. Uh, and then the next day, it says in chapter 12, uh, verse 12, the next day, is the triumphal entry. So we kind of get a picture of how things are coming together. You know, so many times, if we don't watch, the stories, especially in the Gospels, just become a story and a story and a story and a story. But they're all part of a narrative. They're all telling a story, and they're all moving in a direction. And as we see how the direction is moving, they become more than just a good story or a good moral teaching or a good sermon material. They become the life of Jesus. And so as we see this, I want us to see that picture of Jesus' life being lived out in these last few days leading up to the cross. So as we see him coming into Jerusalem, three things I want us to see. Okay, three things I want us to see. Number one, I want us to see the worship of the king. The worship of the king. Uh, it says there in the, these verses we read, uh, they brought the, their coats, they put him on the donkey. He comes in not in a stallion. Now whenever he comes the second time, He's going to be seated on a white horse. He's going to have king of kings and lord of lords down his thigh. He's going to be carrying the, the sword that's sharper than any two-edged sword. I mean, he's going to be coming to conquer. But in this coming in Jerusalem, he didn't come as a conqueror. No, he came humble. He came riding on the back of a donkey. He came uh, very humbly into Jerusalem. But as he comes in, uh, the people are proclaiming, uh, that he is the king, uh, and they are saying there in verse number 38, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We may, uh, in Matthew and Mark, they give that thought. You know, the Hosanna, you know, the, just the praise to the king. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Over in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And you may not have your Bible marked to Zechariah 9, verse 9. It may take you a while to find it, so let me just read it, because by the time you'd find it, I'd have it read, okay? Uh, but I did have mine marked. Zechariah is right before Malachi, okay, if you're wondering there. Uh, chapter 9, verse 9 in, in Zechariah says, Rejoice greatly, O da daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. You know, as we read the Scripture, it should never amaze us that the Old Testament prophecies hundreds of years before are fulfilled to the letter through the life of Jesus because that's who they're prophesying. They're prophesying the Messiah who will come. And as, he, as Zechariah is writing under inspiration of the Lord, he says, Rejoice, your Messiah is coming. He's riding on a donkey. They say, a donkey? He should be riding on a white stallion because he's the conqueror. No, he's coming lowly because he's going to give his life for the ransom for many. So as he comes in, uh, he comes down, it says there, the Mount of Olives. And uh, uh, again, we just give a, a, a shameless uh, plug for the trip coming up to Jerusalem. Uh, hopefully in the end of next year or the beginning of 2022, I guess it would be. Uh, we keep pushing it back and pushing it back, but uh, hopefully it's going to be where we can go. And uh, we'll be standing up on the Mount of Olives, and we'll be looking over the Kidron Valley, and we'll be looking at the Eastern Gate, and we'll be able to picture Jesus coming over the Mount of Olives, coming down that descent toward the Eastern Gate. And as he's coming, the people are proclaiming him. Now, I think it's important because he's coming down, but he's not into, he's not into Jerusalem yet, Okay. He, this is in the descent down the Mount of Olives through the, through the valley. Because once he gets up to the gate, he's in the temple area. I mean, the gate opens up and there is the temple area. It's not like the gate and then you've got a long ways down the road and then comes the temple. The temple mount is right there. And so as he comes in, he's going to be right in the temple 
two other things are going to happen, or at least one other thing is going to happen before he actually gets to the temple. And so as he's coming down, they're proclaiming, uh, uh, proclaiming him as the king, proclaiming, worshiping him. And the, and the Pharisees, uh, the religious leaders, Pharisees, uh, say, teacher, rebuke your disciples. They ought not be saying you're the Messiah. They ought not be calling down praise of God upon you. I love that passage that Jesus says, if they weren't praising me, the rocks would cry out. I mean, this is a momentous occasion because the Messiah is entering Jerusalem, proclaimed as the Messiah. Okay, now, we're going to see uh, in the next several weeks that these cries of Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, uh, rejoice greatly, all of that, blessed is the, is the king, all, all of those praises are going to be turned to, uh, instead of praises, going to be turned to crucify him, crucify him. Okay, but right now they're praising the, the Messiah who's coming, uh, and they are saying uh, he is the one. This is the one. This is the one who's going to set it up and rule and reign forever. Uh, well, second thing I want us to see, and this is as he's coming down that descent, as he's coming down that descent uh, through the, the, the Mount of Olives is a, is a hill, is a mount, and you come down through the Kidron Valley up into Jerusalem. As he's coming down that area, about halfway down, in the middle of that descent, while you're still looking over the city, uh, there's a church built in this, uh, in this location. There's churches built in every location that they think was a scene of an event. Uh, church at the Beatitudes, church at uh, so many different multiplication. I mean, and there's a church built there, and this is the place where Jesus supposedly was weeping over Jerusalem. And you can see Jerusalem from there. I mean, it's not a stretch of your imagination to think when he looks out over there, he sees all the people praising him, all the people giving him glory, but he sees beyond that. He sees the city. He sees the city. Uh, yesterday in the devotion, well, this morning in the devotion, I filmed it yesterday, yesterday in the devotion, I was up on the hill above uh, South Carthage uh, looking out over, over our city, our town. You know, it's, it's amazing. Whenever you can get up high and look out over, it's a whole different perspective than when you're right down there on the street. And so Jesus, as he was looking out over Jerusalem, he sees it for what it is. It's a city that's missed its opportunity. It's a city that's missed the Messiah. It's a city that's missed and, and not understood. And this is what he says there in the next little verses. Uh, verse number 41. And as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it. He wept over it. You know, in uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 34, uh, for time, I'll just give you that reference. He says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He's weeping over the city. Jesus was a man of compassion. I mean, whenever he saw the people, he was moved with compassion. And that's what happens here. He, he comes down. He sees the city laying out there, and he's moved with compassion. And he says this, if you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you and surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you and the to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. I mean, as he looks out over the city, not only does he see a city, not only does he see Jerusalem, not only does he see the Temple Mount or the people that are praising him, but he sees They've missed their visitation, and judgment is coming within a generation. 70 A.D., the Romans come in and level the city, come in and destroy the Temple Mount, come in and, and uh, break down and level just exactly what happens here and bring great devastation to the extent that the Jews are, are scattered out into the world and never come back into that area until 1947. Whenever the UN begins to, or whenever the nations build, uh, establish Israel again as a nation. Uh, now, the Jewish people are out in the nations, but Jerusalem itself is not. It's destroyed as the, uh, as the place for the Jewish people. But it says that I think it's so important in verse 42, you missed your, your, you missed the, your day, the things that make for your peace. You think about Jesus. He is that prince of peace. You miss Jesus, you've missed peace. You can't have peace in your heart and your soul without Jesus. He says you missed your peace. Uh, you missed peace with God. You missed the Prince of Peace. You missed the peace on earth, goodwill toward men. 
because you miss Jesus. Peace that surpasses understanding. Peace when Jesus said over and over and over and over, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You see, in this time, I mean, people who miss Jesus, it's exactly like in the time in Jerusalem. They've missed their peace. Let me tell you, there is no peace with God separate of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only judgment and wrath to come. Not just for the Jewish people, but for all people who have sinned and come short of the glory of God without that hope and that trust in the peace that Jesus brings in our life. They miss their, their peace. They miss their visitation. They miss their opportunity. I mean, can you imagine, you know, if, if some dignitary president come down, down Main Street and, and in the news that night, I would hear the president came down Main Street and stopped for a moment outside the Methodist church and drove on. He was right outside my door and I missed it. We think how much more the king of glory. He was here in our midst and we did not realize it was him. That's exactly what, what uh, Jesus is saying here. You've missed the time when I passed through your midst and you did not realize who I was. Uh, I am the king of glory. So he's weeping over them and he's weeping over them not only just because they missed their peace and not only because they missed their visitation but because of the judgment that's coming on, on the people. And you know, as you, just, as, you, as you can see with the heart of compassion, truly, anybody that you know that does not know, doesn't know Jesus, I mean, that should be us. We should be weeping over them. Just like Jesus wept over the people for the wrath that was coming. We should weep over people who don't know Christ because wrath is coming against them. Because all of sin and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. But we have the, the good news of the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So... The compassion that he saw when he saw the city. And then third, and uh, we'll, we'll wrap up this, this night, uh, and that is uh, as he comes in, the work of the king. And the work of the king is he comes in, it, it's uh, in verse 45, then he went into the temple. As I said, as you come down the Mount of Olives, come down through the valley, you come up through the eastern gate, you just go directly into the temple, into the Gentiles, the court of the Gentiles. Okay, so he's coming through the gates, and there, what meets his eye is what's happening in the court of the Gentiles. Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it. Uh, in other words, whenever he looked about and saw, all of a sudden he saw the offense that was going on in there. Uh, they had taken and made it a marketplace. Uh, they had taken and made it just a place of wares. They had taken and made it a place of taking things that should not belong to them. Uh, they had taken and, and brought in the sheep and the goats and the, and the doves and the money changers. And, you know, the money changers, whenever you come in from wherever you came in in the world and you wanted to give an offering to God, well, you couldn't give it with your money. You had to give it with temple tax. You had to give it with temple money. And so you had to change your money out. Well, and whenever you change your money out, somebody takes some on the side, okay? Yeah, here's, here's your money changing fee, Okay. And so that's why Jesus is going to say you've made it a den of thieves. Uh, you bring in the lamb, and hey, that lamb's not good enough. Put it right over here, but you can buy this one for just this much money, okay? And you wouldn't want to come all the way from South Africa, or you wouldn't want to come all the way from wherever you've come from to worship the one true God and bring him an inferior animal. No, you need to buy this one right here, and, and we're going to make a deal for you today. You see, that's what Jesus came into. You say, they wouldn't do that in the temple. That's the temple. Now, that's why he drives out the money changers. That's why he overturns the tables. That's why he runs out the... Because they've made it just a marketplace. In fact, they would say, uh, that because you come down the valley, you get the idea of coming down the valley, come, coming into Jerusalem, you come directly into the temple. People, instead of going around to the south entrance or going around to the north entrance, they just say, you know, we're just going to cut through the temple. It'd be kind of like us being in here in church and somebody needing to go back here in the, uh, uh, in the back area, and they come in the front door, and they walk around, and they walk out through the back door. And we think, well, we got two other doors. Running. Why didn't you just come around and go in the, well, we just, this was a shortcut. It's just a shortcut. We're in the midst of having church in here. What's the shortcut? Well, we're praising God in here. It's a shortcut. You see, they were treating the temple of God like it was no big deal. It was just another piece of real estate in the midst of Jerusalem. Now, they weren't in the court of the, 
of the Jewish men. They weren't according to the women. They weren't in the Holy of Holies, of course, because this is according to Gentiles. I mean, it's just like a city street. No, it's part of the temple, part of the temple mount. And so as they, as they come in there, Jesus, as he sees all that going on, he begins to drive them out and says, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. And he was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the leaders of the people sought to destroy him and were unable to do anything, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. And so he says to them, God's house is to be a place of prayer for all the nations, but you made it a den of thieves. He quotes there, uh, he quotes uh, the scriptures out of uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 56, 7 says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. And then in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11, it says, this house has become a den of thieves. Okay, so he takes those two passages and pulls them together. Uh, as he says there, uh, that my house is to be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. He shows them, this is what this means. You're, you're taking advantage of the people as they come in. He drives them out, and then he's teaching daily. And what we're going to see in the weeks to come, not only are we leading up to the crucifixion, not only are we leading up to the resurrection, but we're going to see he has a bulk of his major teaching right here in this time. Uh, he's going to teach on uh, uh, the greatest commandment. He's going to teach on uh, the resurrection. He's going to teach on uh, uh, heaven, uh, the, the second coming. I mean, he's going to teach on many different things. And so uh, we've got several more things before we get actually to the crucifixion and the resurrection. But here is the entrance into who is proclaimed as the king. Worship the king. As he looks upon the city, we see the weeping of the king. And then as he comes into his house, one day I believe he will clean his house again. I believe he'll clean his house again. I believe there'll be a house cleaning. Uh, and uh, he'll say to us, he'll say to the church, you know, this is to be a house of prayer. You made it a den of thieves. You know, we need to be cast out anything that's impure, anything that's not right, and follow after what I've made it to be, and that is pure and holy unto the Lord Jesus. So it gives us that picture as he comes into Jerusalem to do business on that first day of the week. Palm Sunday, that Sunday prior to his crucifixion. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll dismiss our, uh, our uh, digital community and have our prayer time and our, Bible study, our business meeting together. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your love for us. Lord, we just thank you for, Lord, your, your word. Lord, as we see it come to life. Lord, as we see it lived out among us. Lord, as we uh, see you coming into Jerusalem, Lord, on that fateful day, Lord, as they proclaimed you as the king, as they proclaimed you as the Messiah, Lord, as they uh, brought forth praise to you, Lord, we see your great compassion as you weep over the city, realizing their lostness, realizing, Lord, their missed opportunity, Lord, realizing, Lord, their, their lost peace with you. And then, Lord, as you come in and you cleanse the house, Lord, as you cleanse the temple, Lord, I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to allow you to cleanse in our life. Lord, you say our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Lord, if there be anything in our lives, in our minds, Lord, in our actions, in our attitudes, Lord, that need cleansing, Lord, that you'd cleanse that, just as you cleansed that temple long ago. Thank you, Lord, for our time together, for your word. Lord, we look forward to you teaching us. Lord, in these familiar passages, Lord, this very important week in your life, the week we call Holy Week, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us, those who join by Digital Church Community. We're going to dismiss you, and as we say each week, you can come and join us if you'd like. You can join us for our prayer time, for our Bible study time, for our uh, business meeting time, for all the different things, uh, but uh, we're going to dismiss you now. So God bless. We'll see you on Sunday. It's good on the, on the Internet, but it's even better right here in the house. So we invite you to come join.